What simple machine? Decided, oh, it could be a wind sensor. This is what I'm talking about. Oh, you already have it on. You're perfect. When every day's a miracle, the time is now. I am making my mask so it stands up straight, and next I'm gonna fix my axle system. Let's go! This is kind of a drill. I took the idea of a drill from her. What would happen if you glued your axle? It wouldn't spin. Exactly, it wouldn't spin. This is a lever arm. It has, it's on a rotating, I guess, axis. Inside here, there are these, which, so if I turn this, it will rotate because this goes up and rotates this wheel, which makes it turn. There's this really long bendy straw, and I, and I saw that, like, the way it was like tube made, I kind of like that. So then I use the brads to make like a claw. Let's go! Go Discovery! It'll take samples from all the dirt and soil on Mars. Look at the camera. That's what I was gonna say. Hello Discovery team! Let's go! Isn't that awesome? That is one of our pilot groups in Denver. We just piloted this project with 75 K through fifth graders in Denver. And then we did a pilot PD with a group up in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. So you guys are the first group that we're actually really launching it with. Okay, so this is gonna be, you know, we might have some issues, but we're all here to help each other to go through this process. So I'm sure you've noticed you have a bunch of cool things on your table. You are going to each build and design your own Simple Machine Shoebox Rover. And we developed this project to build what we call engineering literacy. And so you're going to be exploring simple machines, combining them for complex machines. And if you notice, each one of these is different, right? So we really want you guys to be creative and explore your own design solutions. So Tyler and I wear a lot of hats. We're teaching artists, and our favorite work is really that which we do with Sherry and Whitney. So we're so excited to be here for our third Discovery event. And we've worked with thousands of students and teachers over the last 10 years, really trying to answer this question. How can we transform STEM learning through the arts and making? And along the way, we've learned a ton, especially about the practicality of these make-to-learn approaches. So I want to start by sharing our five top tips for really implementing STEAM, and then we'll dive into the specifics of actually doing this project, and then we're going to move on to a making uh, session where you guys are going to get your internal engineering completed. So I want to do a little informal poll. Raise your hand if you're a bit nervous about doing STEAM about doing science and art, engineering all at the same time. And that's really normal. I still get nervous, especially with the engineering stuff, because doing interdisciplinary work can be a bit daunting. But I want to reassure you, you do not need to know a thing about STEM or art to implement STEAM, OK? Don't feel like you need to be an expert at all of those topics. Instead, kind of transition your thinking and think of yourself as a leader or a coach. So your role is really to guide people through a process and then co-investigate, co-discover, and co-create with your learner, letting them really guide a lot of that inquiry. And if you do this collaborative, co-leading and co-learning approach, you'll find it's really transformative for both your students and yourself as a teacher. And, you know, we hear a lot about maker spaces, right? These cool, innovative studio labs with all sorts of great equipment. But we all don't have access to that. So we really believe that any place can be a maker space. You can do really meaningful problem-based learning anytime, any space, any age. And if you notice this project, we are using a lot of upcycled and basic materials, but we're going to achieve a lot of learning in the process. And STEAM really is about that process, not the end result. It's a process of asking questions, designing solutions, 
testing, evaluating, and revising. It's the same process shared by artists, scientists, and designers. And what's cool is that process-based learning is something that students can take and apply to anything they do in life. We had one student say, I love the projects we do, but what I find really interesting is you're teaching us how to learn and think. And that's really the core, the core importance of these kind of interdisciplinary approaches, I think. And one thing is for certain, things will not always work, especially when you're doing engineering and design. And that's great, because it's the failure that is the catalyst for our deepest learning. That's when we problem solve. That's when we be creative. And we like to create something in our class we call the Edison effect. So if we have 25 students working on a challenge or a problem, we're going to get 25 solutions. So collaboration and failure are actually key pieces to that learning and discovery process. So embrace them. And we also, you know, we find that students and adults sometimes get a little nervous with words like science and engineering, or I'm not good at math, or I can't build. So what we try to emphasize is as humans, you are natural explorers, inventors, and engineers. From our first cave drawings to our most advanced NASA missions, we've always built and designed things to help us in our life. And so STEAM, we don't think of it as a new paradigm. We think of it as a way to rediscover our past as inventive beings. So those are some of our like, key tips for STEAM and getting you in that mindset for these interdisciplinary approaches. And now we're going to apply that in action by actually making together with our shoebox rover. Um, I will warn you, this little guy, my prototype, took about six hours. And <laughs> When we implemented it with our um, pilot sessions, we did it over a course of eight days where we addressed a system each day. Like one day was levers, another day it was wheels and axles. So we don't have time probably to complete our rovers today, but I want you to really kind of dive into the important parts of the engineering. And there's lots of tools and materials we've given you to continue the investigation on your own. I will uh, give you one tip, though. If you're here with multiple people from your organization, maybe you guys want to work on like one box so you can get more systems created and then take your other materials with you so you can get a little further along in the process. This will be on the flash drive, OK? So you'll have this. And I believe that is Tyler's atomic. No, OK. But if you notice on one of the inspiration decks, there's steps, too, our key engineering steps that we're going to go through throughout the day. Um, building engineering literacy. We think this is a really, really key piece of life, of NGSS. And so we designed this project so that you could explore engineering in a really tactile way. Because truly, your hands teach you how to be an engineer. It's hard to just talk about it, right? you got to make physically. And during this, you'll also be using a lot of geometry and measurement skills, so there's great math reinforcement. And the investigation really scaffolds. We're going to talk about simple machines, but if you notice, as your skills build, you'll see that we start to really combine them for more complex mechanics. And this is, this is Tyler's, which is so not fair, because he can do, he's a sculptor and engineer. And then Julie's husband, who's an engineer, did this one. So. This is the base model. This is what a painter made, OK? <laughs> Thank you. Um, we also do this from a guided approach. And then as knowledge and confidence builds, we, we open it up to more open design challenges. So we'll do automata in more of a step-by-step -step phase. But once you feel comfortable, go for it. Um, it's really meant to be learner-led. So come up with your own questions and design solutions you want to give a try. Focus on your process, not the end result, and collaborate. Work with those around you and come up with ideas and troubleshoot together. And we want to design something that's scalable for any age, any space, any budget. And our kindergartners, I tell you what, some of them out-engineered our fifth graders. And then at our pilot in Jackson Hole, our high schoolers were disappointed we didn't do this. We did a different project. So really, it can be for any learner. Um, simple machines. 
Why simple machines? Why do we want to start here? Well, simple machines are the foundation of all engineering. There are six, and they have a special relationship with each other. And when you combine them, you can make more complex machines. And even NASA's most complex missions that we've gotten to see on the Lockheed floor being built, they still use simple machines. So you'll start to see simple machines everywhere after today. But let's review them really quickly. First, we have a wheel and axle, which is a rod with a circular attachment. It's great for locomotion and to help things move. We've got a lever, and a lever has a special connector point called a fulcrum to help it do work, like my elbow. And if you take a bunch of levers on one fulcrum, you get a wheel, like spokes. We also have an inclined plane, which is a sloped surface. We think of them as ramps mainly, but the principle of inclined planes also make triangles become excellent supports. We've got a pulley, and a pulley is a wheel and axle with a rope or chain on it. We have wedge, which are two inclined planes put together to form a point, and they're really great for digging. And we have a screw, which is a cylinder with an inclined plane spiraling around it, and it's great for connecting and digging as well. And so, on the shoebox rover, and again, I'm going to show you the basic type, okay? <laughs> so you'll see both simple and complex machines. I have wheels and axles inside my box forming an automata system. And this guy keeps sticking with a force called friction. I also have wheels and axles on the bottom of my box for a locomotion system. And I have them as rotating turret mounts. Okay, levers. I connected these straws together and formed a basic lever. There's many more samples of levers in your tinker pail. And that at the end of my lever, I have a wedge. I have a scooper, and it has another little lever right here, little connector. I have a pulley system on the back of my rover. And Mars Insight has a pulley system, so that's where I got my idea for that. I have a screw over here. This is made with an old glue stick, so save your old glue sticks for the screw mechanism in them. It's a great way to recycle those guys. Um, oh, this guy got kind of messed up. Here's my little lever for my door, and I've got an inclined plane ramp. Oh, did somebody steal my mini rover? <laughs> it's inside. This, of course, was a kid's favorite part. I got my mini rover. <laughs> and if you look at the other boxes up here, you'll see much more creative. This guy was going to go to Europa. It has a ski. <laughs> it has tank treads, seriously, made from straws stolen from Starbucks, paper, and toothpicks. There's some samples in here, too. But this is a pulley as well. So I want you guys to be really, really creative. Have fun. If something doesn't work, Great, let's, let's figure it out. Ask your neighbor. You guys feel like you're ready to make? Yeah? Okay, so I'm gonna introduce Tyler. Where are you? By the way, we're married if that didn't come across, so. So Tyler is going to go through the automata inside workings of your box. My guy's a little hard to open because I have a lever connector. We have the um, automata boxes on your table to look at because it's hard to see inside your box, so you can see how the motions work. And I'm so excited to see a lot of you already have your axles marked. So great job. Okay, thank you. How is it? Good. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Um, and I'm not sure about the other sites. I think you guys were going to be broadcasting this for a little bit for me to get you started. And I've already walked around to the tables a little bit. Um, so I know that a lot of you have already started your projects, and that's great because we have a lot to get done today. Um, so we are starting with the most complex system on the whole rover, and that is your automata theater. Um, 
And it is a wheel and axle, but it is a more complex wheel and axle. And like Monica was saying, a wheel and axle is basically a lever that rotates around a central um, fulcrum. And if you think about that, um, we also have the up and down motion. So we make that by turning our axle and wheel into a cam. Um, and you do that by putting a hole off center. Um, and again, it's just like a lever. So the first use of this was, you know, thousands of years ago, trip hammers used for smashing grain. Um, and in fact, in China, they're still using them. Um, some that are about 2,000 years old. So to start with, I've showed you guys the template. We're going to take this template. And if you haven't done so, you are going to set it on your lid. And you're going to mark your holes. You're going to pick two holes, one on each side. And you're going to go ahead and mark it. And once it's marked, you're going to want to poke it through with a push pin or a skewer. And then widen the hole, because later we're going to be needing to add our vertical supports, um, like the box examples that you have on your table. So once you have that done, you would move on to the sides. And again, you have a template on your tables. The other sites, hopefully you guys have made your templates. What's that? Oh, yes. And I did explain that here, but for other sites, there is a bottom marked on here. And that is important because these boxes are kind of shallow. Um, we've given ourselves a little bit more room at the top of the box, just in case our wheels, as they're coming around, um, they're not hitting anything on the inside of the box. And so that is something to consider. So make sure that you also get your bottom on the bottom of your box, and then mark those holes. So I'm going to quickly mark mine, and then we will move on to marking our holes in the drive wheels. So in your little goodie bag, and actually that's probably where I should have started, these are the things that you're going to want to familiarize yourself with. You have your templates. You'll notice that down here, this is actually for this little card, and I think it's in your center of your tray. Um, that is going to be for lining up your drive wheels on that lower axle once we get to that point. The push pin is great for going through, especially the thicker cardboard. Um, you're going to want four skewers. And we have these spools here, which eventually you will glue on to secure your axle from keeping it sliding back and forth. So I see everybody digging. I think most of you, I'm looking around the room, you already have your holes marked in your boxes. No, I see a couple heads saying no. So we will walk around the room in a minute, too, and help those of you that maybe came in late and are a little behind. So this is a picture of basically what we are trying to achieve in this first making session. And this is the inside of the box. These are your drive axles, your wheels. And these are your vertical supports coming out of your shoebox lid. So I'm going to give you guys all a second or two to mark your boxes and poke some holes. I noticed some of you are struggling getting through the side, too. There are push pins in the center of your trays on the table. Um, those will help get through that thicker cardboard on the side.
So I will say really quick too, because I see some of you starting to punch holes. Um, we are going to use the smaller circle that's in your bag for an up and down movement. So when you're thinking about your movements on these, whoops, these are both round and round. Um, to go up and down, you are going to place a hole in your smaller circle off center. And the reason we're doing that, I think I just mentioned how much room we have inside here. So if you think about the radius that this is going to create on the inside of your box, we're using a smaller circle so it doesn't bind. For the round and round motion, as some of you are already looking at your circles, you want to mark the center for round and round. So if you look at this, this is your small circle, and it's poked through about a quarter of an inch from the edge of your circle. For round and round motion, we want to go pretty much right through the center. Okay. All right, guys. So we're going to move on to the next part. And if you're a little behind, please don't worry. If you're a little ahead, that's good. OK. So now we're ready to make our vertical bearings. And for that, you guys have a whole bunch of straws in there. You're going to want to take one straw, and you're going to want to cut it in half. Um, you don't have to be exact. It can be a little long. It can be a little short. You'll notice up here that these are all a little different size. And you're also going to pull a triangle out. So we have these little triangles that I cut for you guys. And you are going to want to glue them so they look like this. And you're going to want about a quarter of an inch below the flat part of your triangle. So what we're trying to avoid doing is making our axle too short so that when we put that other spool on the other side, we still have something there to glue onto. And, and what we're doing here by securing both sides of our axles is to prevent the side-to-side -side movement. So what I always do is I start by gluing my spool onto the flat side of the skewer. And then I push that kind of up snug to the box so it doesn't glue to the box. And then I'll slide my other spool on, cut the stick, and then glue it. Well, you don't have to. If you do it the other way, like once it's already threaded, just glue this, um, the flat side, and then kind of snug it up against the box, and then you can mark and cut the other side. So everybody, if you are gluing your spool to your stick, we don't want to glue this to the box. We want, yeah, we want to make sure that our axle spins freely. This is basically an axle stop. It's going to prevent your axle from sliding back and forth through your box. Some of you are really moving along quickly, and you're already getting your drive system onto the bottom of your rover. So the black lids, yes, are for your wheels. Um, you have extra skewers in there to make an axle. Um, we have some cardboard in the center of the tables that you guys can cut to make some standoffs for um, your drive system. And then most importantly, you will all notice that you have an adjustable hole punch on your table. That is to punch the center of those caps as well as putting holes in other things. Um, like Monica was saying, any space can be a maker space. And so these are some of the tools that we bring in for young kids to work with all the time for them to put holes through things. Monica is gesturing to me 
to remind you to make sure you use a bearing for your drive system. We use straws as a bearing for most things. Um, they work great. You can get straws just about anywhere in all different sizes. So that is what you would use as a bearing for your drive system. The first part of this project is really the only guided part. Um, from here, we really let the kids kind of have at it. I will bring in samples of things that I have made in the past from different projects. Um, for you guys here, we have put together a bag of stuff. So you have these little scissor actuators. Um, there is, I just had it up here, a more compound lever. And if you think about a backhoe, um, again, this is the way a lot of these things work. If you start thinking about your geometry, you'll notice that there is a nice square right in here. And that's because I have equal distances um, between my attachment points, right? And then if you notice this other sample arm that I have, I've also shortened the linkage. Um, and that, again, is restricting the movement of the lever. Um, some of these boil down to ratios, and there are definite mathematical equations that can be applied. Um, another thing that you guys have is you have a lever attached to a pulley and a rope, right? And so again, I've made some very simple things and put on the table for you guys to look at and play with. Um, and really what this project is about is getting kids to start thinking, or learners, whoever the participants are, about how you can start linking simple machines together to make more complex machines. Um, we think about technology as being a recent invention. Um, we had incredibly complex computers 2,000 years ago. Um, around 500 BC, we had you know, timekeeping devices with gears, levers, and little mechanisms in there that could track the sun, the moon, um, keep time, be adjusted. Um, long before we had modern day technology, that knowledge really allowed us to kind of develop the technology we have today. If you start thinking about if, then functions, um, that is what we accomplished with simple machines before we had electronics. Okay, this is another one that has a link arm. Um, again, you know, using a lever, a linkage, a um, couple fulcrums, and you can start getting movement. This one I saw some people looking at. This is just different ways of making hinges. But you'll also notice that even just by taking your straws, poking a hole, and putting a brad through, you basically have a hinge too. Um, that's how I made my camera head. 